Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy or preach in Your name, and in Your name cast out demons, and in Your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It is though with one hand God is holding back His justice against this world, and with another hand He is pleading for men to come, but one day both hands will be dropped. You know that, don't you? He uses that word nobody likes, repent. Repent. Not only confess your sin, forsake your sin, repent, run away from it. And a true salvation has observable characteristics. And that the goal of salvation is not a ticket to heaven when you die, or a fire insurance policy at the end of your life. That salvation is for time as well as eternity. An obsession with entertainment in God's house, a hatred of correction and a hatred of reproof. Nobody wants to hear it anymore. Help me to make the break from the cultural religion of America. Help me, God, to understand that I'm not called to use you for myself. I'm called, oh God, to be poured out for you for the sake of others. The narrow gate is hard to find and hard to go through because it demands denial of self, denial of self-righteousness, recognition of sin, full repentance, submission to Christ, commitment to obey Him and follow Him no matter what the cost. You know, we're, we are preaching an acceptable gospel today. Make it as painless as we can. And all we do is give people a shot to put them to sleep so they'll get to hell quicker. We need some hellfire preaching on repentance. I'm sick of dead, irritated, arrogant, denominational, cultural Christianity carries a cross around your neck, but not a crucified Savior in your heart. Whatever happened to anguish in the house of God? Whatever happened to anguish in the ministry? It's a word you don't hear in this pampered age. You don't hear it. Anguish means extreme pain and distress. The emotion so stirred that it becomes painful. Acute, deeply felt inner pain because of conditions about you, in you or around you. Anguish, deep pain, deep sorrow, agony of God's heart. You've taken the holy things of the temple and you've made a party out of it. Could be that you're among the many who are self-deceived. You're not alone. I am convinced that in the name of Christianity, there are many places that call themselves churches, and they're not churches. And they have men leading them who call themselves pastors, and they're not pastors, and they have congregations who call themselves Christians, and they are not Christians. They're not churches, they're not pastors, and they're not Christians. And yet they proudly post the label, Christian. We've forgotten about the majesty of the new birth. People just nod their head and say the sinner's prayer and go straight to hell down the aisle after they've leaned their head on the shoulder of the pastor. 
You know, I doubt if 5% of professing Christians in America are born again. True of England. I'm astounded, bewildered, confused, baffled when people tell me in America we've 75 million people filled with the Holy Ghost and with the rottenest nation on earth. That every believer is a called, gifted, full-time minister of Jesus Christ or the New Testament is a lie. We've had it so easy so long that me, being a New Testament preacher, sounds radical to the American church. What we want is somebody to pat us on the head, tell us how wonderful we are, and then leave them alone till next week when we gather in a building and think this is the church. You are the church, sucker, and everywhere you go, the name of Christ is on your forehead. We've got people now that are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. We become like the children of Israel who said the right words. But here's what God said. I've heard the words of this people. They have well said all that they've spoken. All that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. He said, oh, you have the right words. You sing the right songs, but your heart is not right. And the one voice that a society in spiritual declension will not listen to repeatedly is the voice of the prophet. You see it all the way through scriptures. When God sends the voice of the prophet, they technically usually will put them in a dungeon, will mock the prophet of God, will send them away into another place, will push that voice completely away. I tell you to preach the true gospel in the Christian world today is to engage yourself in more warfare than to preach the true gospel in the world. As God is my witness, I believe that thousands of people will take communion this Sunday and it doesn't mean that much to them. They don't think of the blood of Christ. They don't think he turned God's anger away. You are the only Jesus some people will ever know. You are the only Bible some people will ever read. You are the voice and hands and feet of a crucified Savior in the world today. And I look at the whole religious scene today, and all I see are the inventions and ministries of man and flesh. It's mostly powerless. It has no impact on the world. The voice of the prophet is a mock voice now, not maybe entertained, for a little while, several years, maybe a decade or two back, but no longer listened to. Many are those who enter on the broad way through the wide gate. It's the same many. It's the religious but lost. It's the same many who go on the broad road that says heaven but goes to hell. It's the same many who, when they come to the end of the road, think they will be admitted to heaven only to find that the entrance to heaven is from, as it were, the very portals of... the entrance to hell, rather, is from the very portals of heaven. What a shock that is to think you're on the way to heaven only to find out you are in hell. The greatest gift this side of the world is to be filled, anointed, and kept anointed with the Holy Spirit of God. And if we are Christian chameleons, that act and talk a certain way around certain people and totally change colors when we leave this building and go to work or go to school. God wants to throw up. And I see more of the world coming into the church and impacting the church rather than the church impacting the world. I see the music taking over the house of God. I see entertainment taking over the house of God. We ought not to be afraid to say, Lord, help us, cause us to return to you. Forgive us, Lord, where we've failed you. Forgive us, God, for where in our hearts we have embraced the ways of a fallen society. God Almighty, forgive us. I'm going to be among the chiefest of those there, crying out to the Lord, say, God, forgive me. You don't need to be entertained. You don't need a rock band. You're here for one reason. Tell me what the Word of God says. That's why you're here. I know that. We all know that. 
That's why we're here. We're wanting to make a short-term investment, aren't we, and get the glory of God on one night of prayer, or one evening of prayer. Or I've added two, ten more minutes to my praying each day. If you only believe, if you only receive, if you only walk down the aisle, if you only sign this track, then you've got a contract with God. You've got the promises of God. This is all there is. Lie, 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 from hell, a lie. When is the last time you've been to church where you've seen young people under such conviction because the people of God have been on their face? And there's such a concern and there's such an agony that young people are falling on their faces and calling on God because a spirit of conviction is called down from heaven upon them. And there was a time in this country when I'm sure you would walk in the house of the Lord and if you were living in willful sin, you would tremble. You would tremble. Preachers preach. Now, they may not have always had it right. They may have been a little heavy on the legal side or they, they may have focused a little too much on certain things, but there was a trembling. There was a time in this country when you walked in the house of God and you knew if you were living in sin, you were going to be confronted. The greatest miracle that God can do is to take an unholy person out of an unholy world, make that unholy person holy, put them back in an unholy world and keep them holy. In the midst of a crooked and perverted and perverse generation. Does it really matter to you that your unsaved loved ones are dying and we're getting closer and closer to the end? It, it, does it really concern you? They could die and go to hell. If there is no conviction of sin, if there is no burden to let go of the things of this world and to walk with the Holy God, I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is not there. I believe the same thing happens in our churches every Sunday. People are choking and we're trying to pour the water of life into them and the poor souls are so damned and lost they can't take it. They've listened to the same preacher year after year, says the same things in the same way. He hasn't shed a tear since he left his mother's womb. He went to the seminary and got a big fat head and a shrunken soul. If a man is genuinely born again, all things pass away. All old things pass away and all things become new. Make me solid in the knowledge of Christ. And in this last hour of time, use me for your glory.